Logan Darling, the founder of Functional Kinesiology and the head of the College of Functional Wellness and the founder of the, the clinic's Balance Wellness, along with my fabulous business partner, Laura Knowles. Hello. And we are going to explain to you what kinesiology muscle testing is and how it can be used in clinical practice. So kinesiology muscle testing comes from applied kinesiology, which was developed in the 1960s by Dr. George Goodhart, who was a chiropractor in America. And he discovered that there are ways of us testing muscles to actually get feedback responses from the body. Now his work went on to become a whole big body of work and it is used by a variety of different practitioners. So it's used by chiropractors, it's used by some functional medical practitioners, it's used by kinesiologists like us and it's used by a whole variety now. I see uh, personal trainers doing muscle testing um, and all sorts of things. But when you're working with a kinesiologist, we have been trained to look at uh, the, the way that the muscles are working and whether or not they're working. And I'm going to talk you through a little bit more about that. What Dr. Goodhart discovered over his career was that there are 42 muscles in the body that have links via the nervous system to the organs and the meridian in Chinese uh, medicine. And so we can actually test what's going on in this this circuit by finding the right muscles. This is where kinesiology gets really interesting because just by how someone's walking, if they're saying that they've got pain in their quads, we're thinking, oh, that's to do with the small intestine. Or if they've got shoulder pain, we might be thinking about lung or immune issues. So it starts to send us down this really interesting rabbit hole of the signals that the body is giving us. But that's kinesiology. If you're just looking at what is kinesiology or what is kinesiology muscle testing or what is this weird thing that you're going to be doing in my session, I'm going to tell you that now. <clears throat> so, when we're going to test a muscle, we're basically applying pressure and it's a little bit like finding the biting point of a clutch. So, I'm going to ask Laura to resist my pressure, I'm going to ask her to hold against me. And I'm pushing this way and she's holding that way. So if you hold out for me. And as you can see, I'm actually having to press very hard and that's switching off Laura's muscle. Now what does this mean? Well, when we're testing a muscle, I liken it to trying to turn on a light switch. And if I hold, if I'm, if I'm testing the muscle, what, what I'm doing is I'm pressing the switch. And information has to go through the switch, through the cable, through the fuse, and to the bulb, and then the light has to go on. What that means in, as a kinesiologist is there's a stack of reasons why a muscle might not switch on, including damage to the nerves. There might not be enough hydration in the body. There might not be enough nutrition in the body. There might be a really big emotional issue going on. There could be an issue with the organ underneath. There could be a host of reasons why this muscle isn't switching on. But we then apply tools to make it switch on. One of which, I'm going to test this muscle, is we actually like to rub some points. So just for you to see, I'm actually going to rub a spinal reflex on the back of Laura's neck to switch this muscle on so that I can show you some of the magic of kinesiology. Mm. Now if you're starting to play around with some muscle testing in your clinic, uh, I would always recommend that your, the person that you're working on has had water because water is one of the fund or dehydration is one of the fundamental reasons that muscles won't be working and that you won't get a good read and that can be quite off-putting when you're first starting in. So holding out for me now. This muscle now, I can put loads of pressure on, loads and loads and loads, and it's holding beautifully, absolutely beautifully. And that's what we want from our muscles, we want them to be nice and strong when they're challenged. But to give you an example of how we've worked with this in clinic and how you can use it in your practice, uh, I'm going to ask Laura to, Laura has a few skin issues, and I'm going to ask her to contact a skin issue with a couple of fingers. And just hold on to it because this is how we start to use the muscle testing to be able to get right in to working with issues. So now Laura's holding that bit of skin issue and the reason that she's holding it is 
a lot of neurology that happens in kinesiology. Like I said, there's a lot of reasons why a muscle won't test. And if there is pain, so if Laura had a bad knee, I could get her to hold the knee, and those pain signals would, you know, a lot of neurology would happen around them. But also Laura's, you know, with her skin issue, there's a lot of neurology. Her body's clever. It knows that there's an issue in the skin there. So whilst Laura's contacting this, I'm now pressing on this muscle and you can see it switching off again. Now that's telling me something. It's telling me that the body can't resist the challenge of being the muscle tested whilst she's holding this. This is a stressor to her body. This is something that, you know, the body would like to be able to actively remove. So the way that we work with that, you can use many, many tools. So there might be, you know, if you're a chiropractor, there are chiropractic adjustments, a variety of things that you can do. If you're an energy therapist, you might be using anything from crystal to color, a whole host of things. As a functional kinesiologist, I work with batch flower remedies and I also work with nutrition. So I want to show you what that looks like. So I've got a little selection here of things that are commonly to do with skin. So first off, I put everything near the parotid glands, near the jaw, because the body doesn't really know then, this is our salivary glands and where we sort of start the digestive process. So the body doesn't know that it's not in the mouth. The skin's quite thin, so we're popping it right near her parotid gland. We're just going to see with her fingers still there, does this make a difference? Yes. Look at that, can you see? If I take that away, absolutely nothing. And the difference is when that muscle is really nice and firm, I have to put some real welly in to try and get a response from it. So that was the batch flower remedy. That's actually for overwhelm, and I have to put it, I've been working quite hard lately. So let me try a few nutritional supplements. No, not that one, vitamin D, really common for skin, but no, I didn't want it on this occasion. So let's try something else, holding out. Ah, lovely. So that's actually an omega-3, and omega-3 is lovely for skin and clearing things out that the body doesn't want there. So this is a very functional way of us finding targeted supplements, targeted energetic tools, things like batch flower remedies, really assessing what's going on. Is this skin an issue for your body? Really, you know, quick functional processes. And further down the line, if people are you know, making changes, they're using the targeted supplements, we work a lot with diet, we work a lot with hormones, you can then start to add in other things like lab testing and you know, all sorts of other bits and pieces. Uh, we can work on the structure of the body, we work as kinesiologists biochemically, so with nutrition, with diet, with food sensitivity, we work emotionally, we work electrically because we work with five element theory and acupuncture holding points and meridians and we work structurally because we're looking at those 42 muscles and how they actually you know, change posture and even by changing our posture we can actually put huge pressure on structures in the bowel such as the iliocecal valve, we can put pressure on our jaw, we can cause all sorts of issues. So, anything I've missed? No, that was wonderful. <laughs> so that is a beginner's guide to kinesiology muscle.